walk this morning with my mind. Stand on Jesus. And if you got your mind on Jesus, give him the glory and say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen.
and cried out, My God, he heard my voice in his temple, and my cry came before him, even his ear. I have read Psalms 18, 1 through 6. The Lord has blessed us with and hearing of his own word. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Amen. Father God, we come to you this evening, Lord. Yes, sir. Bow down heads and humble hearts, Lord. Yes, sir. In the attitude of gratitude, Lord. Thank you for waking us up one more day, Lord. The yes, day that you made, Lord, and we rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. We thank you for health and strength, Lord. However it is, Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord. Thanks, Even if we woke up this morning and didn't feel well, we want to thank you, Lord. Food on our tables, clothes on our backs, Lord. How does the little be in, Lord? We just want to thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. If we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough, Lord. But we just want to thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, Lord. You've been so good to us, Lord. Better than we have been to ourselves, Lord. And we just want to thank you and praise you, Lord, because you are worthy to be praised, Lord. And we just want to praise you, Lord. Lord, tonight, Lord, we just come to you, Lord. And some of us, we know how, Lord. But we just want to praise you because we're here to praise you, Lord. We're we just left those up there on their job, Lord, and had a hard time, Lord. But we know that you just carried them through, Lord. And we just want to thank you, Lord. We thank you for safety on the roads coming here, Lord. We know the highways are dangerous, Lord, but you, it was your grace and your mercy, Lord, that saw us through, Lord. Lord, we have left up to preach word, the messenger that's coming this evening, Lord. Let the word touch someone who needs that touch this evening, Lord. And we just want to praise you, Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, for guiding our, our feet, Lord. Let us walk in your paths that you made for us, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask this in your darling son, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's raise our voices. Thank you, Lord. Say that.
God. Good to see all, you, all of you tonight on day four of our revival. And what a time we've had. Amen. 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 Uh, with a theme of, of fill us up. Amen. Amen. The first night we talked about Naomi and how to go from a bitter place to a house filled with bread. Amen. And he told us how to do that. And that's to go where the Lord is. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, uh, the second night we talked about Mary and how she cared about someone more than herself like it was her own problem amen and we talked about the second night filling somebody else up amen amen filling somebody else up and on last night we talked about the woman who took care of Elijah before herself and so that God would refill us when we fill somebody else up He'll refill us up. Amen. 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 And what a, what a word and what a message uh, that is so apropos for today's time. Amen. Amen. Because out there, we can quickly feel like we own empty. Amen. And we need the filling of the Holy Spirit and the filling of God's presence with us daily. Amen. Amen. And so on tonight, we're going to open it up for uh, prayer and testimonials for praying and uh, for testimonials, so hey, don't don't make me beg. Don't make me beg. I shouldn't have to. I know God has has done something uh, for all of us. Amen. 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 brought us through so many things and we can be so thankful but we might not say it to him mm. and I've sat here every mm. night and said I'm gonna get up and mm. and then you get up and I said oops I lost my time mm. so today I decided I better get up now because <laughs> <Praise laughs> <God. laughs> we know without God in our lives there it, we're we're nothing um, we can't do anything and we need to stop saying I and say him and because yeah. he does it all. Amen. Um, he fills us up, like Amen. he said, and he can give us enough to fill somebody else up. Amen. And um, I just want him to know that um, he is first and foremost in my life and our family's life. And everything we do, we do unto him. Amen. Um, I just want you guys to know that my mom is saying hello Amen. from home and she she was feeling good until it was time to go and then she didn't feel good but i told her that we would keep her in prayer tonight um because this is what she looks forward to Amen. is being close Amen. to god Amen. and she wants to stay connected and Amen. we're going to stay as connected Amen. as we are so she'll get Amen. the blessings too Amen. so we just thank you thank you Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. On, on last night, uh, with the, the message about the woman in Elijah uh, and the Lord refilling her, and what a good point was that when she got refilled, so did her family. Did y'all hear that? When she got refilled, so did her son. She said, me and my son are going to eat this and die. But because she got refilled, her son also got refilled. And so do you see the covering of the household of blessings? And so, hey, you're not just getting filled up for yourself <laughs> and refilled for yourself, but for your entire family. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you for that testimony, Miss Gay. Thank you for that. Anybody else have a testimony? A testimony or a praise. Just a praise. Praise God. Praise God. You look around and you say, I'm always getting up, but God is always good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got to get up and give him praise and glory and honor for all that he's doing and how he's brought me through the surgery and just ask for you all to continue to pray that I sit down somewhere sometime. Mm -hmm. 
and rest because you know mm. you feel so good and I mean it's been good coming out and 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 God has just filled me and blessed me every night mm. but it looked like today I felt worse than I've ever felt mm. before it seemed like my hip went backwards instead of forward but I was still not going to let Satan stop me from my mm. blessing because you know what I do I'm going to go on that job tomorrow. Mm. So if I'm going to go on that job tomorrow, mm. I'm sure coming to the house mm. of the Lord mm. that he can feel me because he can, he, he, can, he, he can take the hurt and pain away. Mm -hmm. You see, all I got mm. to do is be obedient mm. and come mm. and let him do the rest. Because mm. I'm telling you, I've been going through for some years, but this message that Pastor Bailey has been bringing mm. this week, I know it has been from me. Mm. I know it because a lot of times you focus on what you're going through. Mm. And you're constantly praying about, Lord, help me, help me, help me. But it's not about me. It's about him. Mm. And so if he brought me to it, mm. He going to bring me through it. Amen. So I just want to continue to give him the praise and hope and pray that my walk will be an example for someone else mm. that is standing in my shoes to know God can see you through. Mm. All you got to do is trust him. Amen. So I just ask that you all keep my family in, in your prayers. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good evening. Pastor Day, uh, Reverend Scaife, and to our uh, evangelist, uh, Choo Choo. Yeah. Uh, I, I was like so many of, of us. I just felt like I, I don't really have anything to say. But I thought, I need to get up and say <laughs> something. I just <laughs> can't the sit Praise there God. without God. thanking God Praise for God. what he's done for me. Yeah. Uh, in the year uh, 2015, I had to help both both knees replaced mm -hmm. and he brought me through it yes. uh, I was uh, sharing with uh, my friend sister uh, Reverend Joyce Bruner today uh, uh, we were talking about sister Hart sister Hart had to have one mm -hmm. knee replaced and she's going through her mm -hmm. struggles but I just uh, asked for the church to continue mm -hmm. to pray for sister Hart because she's going through her struggles but we all have to go through it. We all have a cross to bear. And I tell you, I will not trade my cross in for anything because I know God gave me that cross. He gave it to me, so I know he's going to help me to bear my cross. So we all have crosses that we have to carry. But I just ask you all to pray my strength in the Lord, and let's keep Sister Hart lifted up because she's going through some trying days, trying to get through the first few weeks of that having that knee surgery done, and I know what she's going through. So let's, let's continue to pray for her, and please pray my strength will be strengthened through the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. I listened to um, Sister Charla, said she had to get up and say something. I'm like Sister Marsha, I always got something to say. <laughs> um, I think she has a similar personality as I. We're extroverts. I like people. And that's a good thing. I think Praise that's God. a gift that I have God. from God. And Amen. Um, Amen. I uh, want to always serve him. First of all, I reverence him. And I'm always telling my Bible study and prayer band family that I love that word because it means to adore and to worship. And he's the only one that's worthy um, for that word to be used. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just thank him for bringing me through another year. I was here uh, at the last revival, and here the Lord has brought me here again. And as Reverend Choo Choo has been preaching about the filling up, I, I, one thing I really got out of that is to keep my focus on God and not myself. Mm -hmm. And if any of you are going through anything, if you keep, if, if you get selfish and just thinking about yourself, you're going to start getting uh, depressed, self-pity, mm. uh, mm. you know, and because um, one while there I was angry at my family.
because they weren't here to help me, you know, and you just all kind of, Satan just use all kind of stuff. Mm. But I uh, stopped doing that. Mm. I started focusing on the Lord, asking him for wisdom and guidance and strength each day. Not just, Lord, help me with this, you know, whatever, however long it, but asking each day because he's promised us. He has new blessings for us every day. Mm. And so I just thank him for sustaining me. And most of all, I thank him for having chosen me. Mm. Because um, the Lord Jesus died for me. I have the gift of eternal life. And I definitely want my family and my church family and my community to be able to share in that same gift. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. There another. The Velcro released me from the chair. I love you, Mount Olive. Amen. God has been so good. Amen. You guys just have no idea. Um, this last year, you know, usually I come up here to tell you about all the good things and things I'm going through. Well, over this last year, uh, it's been about two years of self-employment. But over this last year, he's blessed me with this new facility around the corner. He's blessed me with more customers than I could handle. He's blessed me with some customers with more money than I could spend. He says, God is so good. But also, uh, he's also blessed me with uh, True Vine Indian Baptist Church. I may not be here with you guys on Sundays. But I take what my pastor, Pastor Busby, showed me how to do things over the years. He didn't really say nothing, but just watch him. He gave you some skill sets if you just watched them. If you just watch them, and sometimes as a child you try to emulate certain people in your life. Mount Olive, whatever you do, don't change who he showed you to be. Amen. I remember the last time I preached here, I talked about find a man in the order of Melchizedek and a man in the order of Aaron. You got your man. You got your man, stand by him. God will fulfill the rest. He ain't Pastor Busby, but he's a chip off the block. This church is built on a, on a really solid foundation in Jesus. Amen. Amen. A whole lot of preachers built a whole lot of floors. Pastor Busby built a real big, strong floor, and we're going to build another one on top of that. But every structure, every level, every brick laid at the, be at the beginning is strong and solid. Love you, Pastor. God is good. Steadfast immovable, always abounding in the Lord. It's going to be all right. You know, it, it might not look as crowded up here. But you know one thing I, I do know for sure. You can't inherit somebody's following. But if you do the same things in the same order, you could create your own following. Create your own legacy. Become your own legend like your grandpa was. And God's going to be all right. Amen. Love you, mama. All right. God is good. Praise God. Are, are there any other testimonies before we close out testimony? And let's... Reverend Scott, who's first in my life, passed today, Reverend yeah. Scapes, to my father's children. It's just a blessing just to be here. Mm. I just thank God for the revival, um, because actually before we got ready to get started, I've been praying um, for my uncle, and today God just blessed him to walk from his house to sit down on my dad's porch with my dad. And he was down there laughing and giggling. He said, nephew, where you going? I said, Uncle, I'm finna get ready to go to revival. He said, boy, you just don't miss going to church, do you? I said, no, I don't. You know, because once God has done something for you, you got to go. Mm -hmm. 
no matter how tired you is, what's going on and all that, I know God has been good to me. Mm. So I just thank God for the revival because um, I tell everybody, uh, Johnny Pearl is my sister. Um, we had talked Sunday and she said, um, she said, brother, you know the revival getting ready to start. You going to revival? I said, I ain't going. I ain't going the first two days. And God has blessed me to be here every night. Praise God. So I'm going to quit saying what I'm going to do because it ain't about me. It's about God. And Lord bless if I'm living and breathing, I'll be here tomorrow. Yeah, praise God. Because my thing is, uh, truly, Pastor Bailey has blessed my soul. Praise God. Um, just, you know, preaching the word, and I needed every bit of it. Amen. And I just want the church family to know that my uncle's doing all right, and I was just shocked. Because I even offered to take him back home when I was getting ready to come to church this evening. He said, nephew, I got it. He said, uh, what you say? I'm trusting in the Lord. So I just thank God for your prayers and, um, you know, continue to let's keep uh, praying for one another. And while I'm standing up here, uh, let's keep Sister Joe at her heart mm -hmm. in prayer, too, because I know she would be here every night. Mm -hmm. And for his brother Backus, you know, mm -hmm. our loved ones that's not here, mm -hmm. you know, sick and shed in and whatever's going on with them. So let's continue to keep them lifted up. Mm -hmm. And before I sit down, um, I want to say um, we had a church member that was ushering last night that um, lost his phone. And you know, now with technologies and all that kind of stuff and everything that, um, you know, he was looking for it. So if somebody's picked up a phone, found it. you found it, yeah. well, yeah. praise yeah. God. Amen. 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 Praise God. It's yours. Um, um, praise God. Uh, we're going to close our testimony, but as they, they took the words out of my mouth, I talked to Brother Backus and his Sister Hart earlier today, and uh, let's continue to keep them in our prayers. Uh, and we'll have next the Brotherhood uh, give us a selection. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.
coming before you to do our pulpit devotion. Uh, I'll be doing our scripture, and Reverend Scaife will, Scaife will be doing our prayer. Uh, I'm coming from Matthew 5, beginning at verse 3 through 12. Matthew 5, verse 3 through 12. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely. For my sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For they, for they so persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. Heavenly Father, Father, we gather today, Father on this joyous moment, Father, on this fellowship moment, Father, for this opportunity to just get together and fellowship in your name, Father. Father, some of us need a renewal in our spirits, Father. Father, we come here today, Father, claiming that renewal right now, Father. Father, we claim the renewal right now, Father. Father, in your name, Father, lift us up, Father. Father, let the words that we receive today, Father, meditate on our hearts and on our minds, Father. Father, let it soften us, Father. Some it might need to tear apart, 
and put back together, Father, so you can rebuild us anew, Father. But, Father, let the words that we receive today, Father, not be kept a secret, Father. Father, shall we find every opportunity to go out and tell somebody about the word we received at church tonight, Father, about the word we received last night, about the word we receive here on every Sunday, Father. Father, as this church is in a, in, a, in, a, in a state of transition right now, Father, Father, we pray over every member of this church right now, Father, for all the church family, Father, all the church family extended, Father. Father, for those that are here, Father, for those that have gone away, Father, Father, we pray over them right now, Father. Father, we pray over healing over this church right now, Father. Father, we pray for a growth over this church right now, Father. Father, we pray over the continuation of this ministry that has been laid out over the years, Father. But Father, we pray mostly over this pastor, Father, over this church right now, Father. Father, touch him. Touch him as you have already, Father. Father, give him an extra dose, Father. Father, double down on what you already gave him, Father. Father, triple down on the Father. Father, when you finish with that, give him some more, Father. Let him be the man that you said that you was, Father. Let him be the man that my all have called him to be, Father. Father, right now, Father. The Father over this minister that come to give us the word, Father. Father, we thank him for, for his loyalty, Father. We thank him for his devotion, Father. Father, we thank him for coming back and serving, Father, in the capacity he served so many years, Father. Father, shows that he wasn't doing it just for the man that was here, Father. Father, he was serving for the church, Father. He was serving for the community, Father. And Father, but most of all, he was serving for his own soul, Father. Father, let the words that you put in his mouth, Father, be uplifting to all of us, Father. And Father, let the words that you put in his mouth, Father, take us to greater heights, Father. In Jesus' name, Father, we ask for a feeling right now, Father. Touch us. Touch us right now, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Praise God. I don't know about you, but I'm excited, and I've come to hear a word from God. Amen. Amen. We've been fed real good these last three days. I don't know about you, but I've been eating. <laughs> I've been eating, and I'm looking to eat again on tonight. Uh, and not just my, for myself, as he's been telling us, but that I may share the, the good news and the words uh, that I've learned with others. Amen. Amen. And our, our revivalist, again, he really doesn't need any introductions. Uh, we all know him already. And I just want you to put your right hand forward and say, Pastor Bailey, Pastor Bailey. Preach, the word. preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Amen. Amen. The next voice you will hear after our choir will be that of Pastor Bailey of St. Andrew, excuse me, St. John in uh, Dallas, Texas. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I want to say several things before I get started. First of all, Pastor Knight, give, give me a few minutes. I want to do a couple of things. Uh, Pastor Day, thank you so much for having me back again. I, I, I just praise God for this revival. It's a new experience for me, and uh, it's a sad yet joyful experience. Sad because Pop Busby is gone, but glad because the Lord sent you here. And every day... He, his kids and my kids have been eating together and talking together. And to see him with three children in his arms and feeding them and giving them milk, I tell you, it, it, it has been something. And he's a wonderful pastor, but he's also a wonderful father and a husband. And, and, and now I got to say one more thing. And the boy can play some basketball. I mean, he could have been in the Olympics with me somewhere. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, would you all help me just salute and thank God for Pastor Day on tonight? Just thank him, thank you for his leadership and First Lady Day, who's not here, to Mama Busby, bless you. I want to say uh, a couple more things, right quick. Uh, Quentin, I really don't like you on tonight. <laughs> I, I don't. I'm just gonna tell the truth. I was good until I found a. He can play the piano too, you know. <laughs> you know, one thing just be able to sing and play football and play basketball, and he can play the piano. <laughs> I don't like him. I really don't. Go tell his mama. I don't. I don't like him. I also need to let you all know that this is next year's probably going to be the year that I retire from playing basketball here in Sapapa. <laughs> Kevin, you better stop clapping. <laughs> Uh, we were supposed to play yesterday, truthfully. We were supposed to play yesterday, and I had my team with me on yesterday. And then Bubba, you know, did a switcheroo on me and said, we can't come today, so we got to we had to play today, and my team couldn't come. Uh, only half of them could come. And we won the first two games. And uh, after that, says my uh, attrition, and uh, my age started turning off on me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they waited. To, uh, you know, I'm not gonna go out. You know, like that. I'm, I'm gonna go out like Kobe Bryant. So next year, I'm gonna hit 60 points on them. We won the first two, and we lost the second two. And uh, we were gonna play one more, but my team had to go. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> had to go, but I ain't nowhere in the world. I'm gonna let them come next year. I'm going out on the bang. I'm going to be like Kobe. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm telling you. Uh, uh, Y'all saw Quentin limping tonight, right? I, 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 I hit him with a crossover, and uh, here, here. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, look at it. Now he can walk. Now, now he can. It's a miracle. <laughs> we had to carry him off the court. We had to carry him he, And so we were cold for about. You can't, you can't let old people get cold. Yeah, you know, joints start hurting. I mean, they, they played one on us. They played one on he, I'm His teammate sitting right next. Could he walk at the game? Could he walk? I know, no, 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 it's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. We had to carry him off the court, and on tonight, he walks in. They played the old people. They, they, they played us. And I tell you, I'm going to beat y'all. I'm going to beat, because I've never lost to them. I've never lost to them. It hurts to lose. And, you know, Pastor can play. It, it, but let me tell you, we had a star on our team, and uh, she was she was young school, she was new school, but her name was Momo. Momo, would you stand right quick so they can see that that girl got game? She, she, she can stand. Mo is bad. Mo can go. Now I want to tell y'all, uh, Quentin. Uh, I was in the kitchen a few minutes ago, and uh, Bubba said he was the MVP on y'all squad because he hit eight points to y'all's like you know. Combine that. That's what hey, Bubba. That's what you said in the kitchen. Divide and conquer. <laughs> that's what he said. Just want you to know, Quentin. They they said you you gonna be on old school next year. <laughs> Look, let me get to business on the night. Well, all the men in the house, would y'all stand? All the men in the house, I just I, I want you to stand. We're main standing. This is men's night on tonight. Men, I want you to make some noise. Let the women know you inside the house on the night. Y'all, y'all don't sound like men tonight. All right, let's try it one more time. Do we need a David? Do we need a practice run? You, you got it now. Let the women know you in the house tonight. Hey, there you go. There you go. There you go. Put some bass in your voice. You may be sitting. <laughs> Listen. Whenever a woman joins the church, or a mother joins the church, her family follows her 34% of the time. But whenever a man joins the church, they follow the man, the husband, the father, 90, the family follows 93% of the time. Men, is imperative that you get in church. You get active in church. You support the church through your time, your talent, and your tithe. And your family will follow suit. I say this to you tonight because 95, 59% of people who grew up in the church no longer go to church. I want that to sink in. 59% of people who grew up in the church no longer attend church. We're losing the millennials. We're losing the young people because the fathers, the men are absent in the church. So tonight, I want to encourage you, man. I, I'm not here to build, beat you down. I'm here to build you up. 93% of people of your family will follow if you give your heart to God, work and serve inside of the church. With that, let's stand on tonight and let's go to the word of God. It's found in 2 Kings chapter 3. I apologize that you're listening. God says chapter 2. I really apologize about that, but it is correct on the screen. Hey, would you do a favor with me right quick? I want to do two things. Number one, would you put your listening guys down? And I want to thank God for, uh, uh, I want you all to help me to support uh, the media team who's been uh, active all week. Would you all help me support them, encourage them on tonight? Would you, um, I love, Mount Island, y'all got some of the best ushers in the whole wide world. Would you all help me? Thank God for the ushers on tonight. And one more thing, for all the choirs and for the music ministry, would you all just help me thank God for them on tonight? Amen. You got to give credit to what credit is doing. All right. 
2 Kings chapter 3, verses 4 through 19. It's a lot of reading, but it's um, a lot that's inside of that's going to bless us. King Mesha Moab was a sheep breeder. He used to pay the king of Israel 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams. But Ahab died, the king of Moab rebelled against king of Israel. So King Jeram marched out from Samaria at that time and mobilized all Israel. And he sent a message to King Jehoshaphat of Judah, the king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? Jehoshaphat said, I will go. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Then he asked, which route should we take? Jerome replied, the route of the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel, the king of Judah, and the king of Edom set out. After they had traveled their indirect route for seven days, they had no water for the armies of their animals. The king of Israel said, oh no, the Lord has summoned three kings only to hand them over to Moab. But Joseph had said, isn't there a king of the Lord here? Isn't there a prophet of the Lord here? Let's inquire of Yahweh through him. One of the servants of the king of Israel answered, Elijah, son of Shaphat, who used to pour water on Elijah's hands, is here. Jehoshaphat confirmed the Lord's words are with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went to him. However, Elijah said to King Jeram of Israel, we have nothing in common. Go to the prophets of your father and your mother. But the king of Israel replied, no, because it is the Lord who has summoned these three kings to hand them over to Moab. Elijah responded, as the Lord of hosts lives, I stand before him. If I did not have respect for King Jehoshaphat or Judah, I would not look at you. I would not take notice of you. Now bring me a musician. While the musician played, the Lord's hand came on Elisha. Then he said, this is what the Lord says. Dig ditch after ditch. In this wadi. For the Lord says, you will not see wind or rain, but the water will be filled with water. And you would drink, you and your cattle and your animals. This is easy. Help me say this is easy. In the Lord's sight. He will also bring Moab over to you. He will also hand Moab over to you. I want to talk about on tonight, fill it up. Let's go to God and pray, Lord, how we thank you and we praise you for the message on the day. Lord, we thank you for how you're going to move on today. We thank you for the word that you have given us on today. Lord, I pray for every man that's in this place. Lord, I pray that you would be with us on today. Lord, I pray that you would encourage these men on tonight to hear a word from you that it will. Empower them and encourage them to dig for their families and to dig for their future, to dig for your kingdom. Lord, I pray now in Jesus' name for the women who are here on tonight who's going to hear this message and who need to do some digging in their life. Lord, I want to pray and I ask on tonight that you touch and you deliver you. You help us to see you on tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. And let every heart that loves the Lord say amen. amen. And thank God. Amen. On your way to see, on your way to your seat, would you just turn and tell somebody, fill it up? <laughs> Friends, on tonight, I, I want you all to try it again. I, I, we, we've been dealing all week with God filling up these empty holes in our souls that only God can fill. We talked about how God refills us. We dealt with Ruth, how she went out full, came home empty, but the Lord gave her a refill. We talked about on Monday night, as long as you stay in McDonald's, you can keep going back and forth and forth, getting your cup filled, and that's the same thing that's true on tonight. As long as you stay in God's will, you can keep going back to his everlasting fountain. And keep getting a refill. We talked about how God used Mary to fill up someone else. 
It wasn't her wedding. It wasn't her problem. But she went and filled it up. She asked Jesus not to fill it up for her, but to perform a miracle for someone else. And we talked about if you cannot receive a miracle, then you ought to at least be a miracle for somebody else. Fill it up. That we talked about on last night how God fills us up whenever we empty out. He doesn't fill a full cup. He waits till you empty out on his program. After you empty out on his vision, on his goal, on his work, then he'll fill you back up. But on a night, God tells you and I on tonight, if you dig... He'll fill it up. He tells you and I men on tonight, if you dig, put your back into it. He'll fill it up. This message tonight is for those of you all who have dreams and you have goals. You have desires. You have ambitions. But yet you also have a problem and God said there's some things you're going to have to dig your way out of. There's some miracles you're going to have to dig your way into. God says to you on tonight, dig and whatever you dig, I'll fill up. Friends, on tonight, let me share with you what has happened. King Jeram has just taken over the throne of Israel. His father Ahab had died. We talked about him on last night. He was the husband of Jezebel. The king of Moab would pay him yearly 100,000 sheep and 100,000 wool off of 100,000 ram. Even though this is thousands of years later, that's still a lot of money. That's a lot of manpower that he got for free. After Ahab died, his oldest son, Ahazah, he took over Israel. He had a fall. He was far from God like his father Ahab was far from God. And he wanted to know, am I going to get better? And he sent a prophet to the god Beelzebub to ask, am I going to get better? Or is this fall, is it fatal? As that servant is on his way to the God Beelzebub, Elijah stops him. He says, go back and tell and ask your king, Ahaza, are you going to another God because there's no God here in Israel? Because you've gone to another God, this is what the Lord God says, you won't get better. Matter of fact, you're going to die. And just as Elijah spoke, King Ahazah died. He died without having a son to take on the air. And so since he could not take on the air, he has no son to take over on the air. His brother Jeram now takes control of Israel. Friends, it is interesting for you to note that once Jeram, who's a young king, takes over the throne, now the king of Moab says, this young buckaroo, who still has Similac on his breath. Who's wet behind the ears. I'm going to stop paying him. So he stopped paying him the 100,000 lambs. And he stopped paying him the wool from 100,000 rams. And Jeram was disrespected as anybody would be. He said he paid my daddy. He paid my brother. You mean to tell me you're going to stop paying me? So he said. Some choices. He, choice number one, he could say, well, I just do without it. Choice number two, he could let pride take in. And as pride takes in, he's able to say, well, what are people going to say when they see him disrespect me? I can't be a pushover. I can't be a wimp. Well, I don't know where y'all from, but from North Tulsa, if you let one person run over you, 
somebody else is going to run over you. So he decides to call up his friend who's underneath him, King Jehoshaphat, who has wartime experiences. He calls him up and asks Jehoshaphat, can you help me? I need to go get my money back. King of Moab, he owes me money. I need some help. King Jehoshaphat said, you, I, you have my men, there's your men, and only that. I can guarantee the king of Edom because that king is indebted to me. So now these three nations, they come together. These three nations come and they join forces to come and defeat Moab. So King of Moab will start paying back the 100,000 lambs he did yearly and the 100,000 rams wool he did yearly. So this is what happens. The king of Israel leaves Samaria, heads down to Judah. It's a four-day journey. King Jehoshaphat grabs his men, his armies. They begin to walk down and march down to Edom because they're going to the backside to defeat the Moabites. They get there, it's a three days journey, which means it's seven days all together. The people of Israel left Samaria. They met up in Jerusalem and in Judah. They left Judah after four days. They had three days down to Edom, and now they left Edom, and they're now at the verge, at the Dead Sea. Been a few days' journey. But something happens. That's a problem. They run out of water. I don't know if you know anything about the Dead Sea area, but right now, if you can Google it, its average temperature is 104 degrees. Can you imagine in a desert running out of water with 104 degrees? Their tongues are dry. They're perspiring. Matter of fact, they stop because there's nothing to perspire. They have no water. Not only are they dehydrated, but their animals are dehydrated. Their horses are dehydrated. And so therefore they have, they would have no strength in the morning to fight the Moabites. You, you can't do anything when you're dehydrated. You, many of you all know people who have fainted and fallen out when they became dehydrated. Many of you all have seen basketball players and football players on the sideline in the NH, in the NF, NFL and NBA and even in college they have IVs in their arms because they're dehydrated they have a problem I want to ask you on today what do you do when you have a problem that's the question what, 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 what do you do when you have a problem there are two responses whenever you have a problem the first response when you have a problem when something goes wrong is you blame God listen verse 10 the king of Israel said oh no the Lord has summoned three kings only to hand them over to Moab the three responses the two responses when things go wrong the first response is to blame God now I want to remind you all when the king of Moab rebelled without bringing the 100 without giving the 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams, King Jerome did not say, hey, let me talk to God about it. No, he took matters in his own hands. I want to ask you, have you ever took matters? Don't raise your hand. Have you ever? <laughs> you, you, you didn't pray about it, you just cussed them out. You, you, you didn't pray about it. You just got revenge. Bad things happen whenever you take matters in your own hands. Let me tell you, see, when, when something went wrong in Genesis chapter 3, when, when Adam and Eve recognized they were naked, Adam blamed God. He said, it ain't my fault. It's this woman you gave me. I didn't make her. Satan blamed God. He said, the only reason why Job serves you is because you baby him and you spoil him. 
Blaming God, listen, gets you nowhere. Don't blame God for choices you've made. Don't blame God when things go wrong in your life. It's not God's fault. He's teaching you. Matter of fact, that's the second response. Either you can blame God or you can talk to God. Look at verse 11. But Jehoshaphat said, isn't there a prophet of the Lord here? Let's inquire of Yahweh through him. Jehoshaphat said, let's talk to God. There's two responses. You can blame him when you get sick. You can blame him when you lose your job. You can blame him when things go wrong. Or you can say, Lord, what you saying to me? Lord, what are you teaching me? Lord, what is this you want me to learn from you? Talk to him. When things go wrong, talk to him. Let me tell you what happens when you talk to him when when Noah, when it rained 40 days, when Noah talked to God, God told him, build an ark. When Jacob had a problem, when Esau was coming to kill him, he talked to God, and God delivered him. Friends, not only that, when David Lost his wife and his kids. He talked to God. God told him, go. Go after them and you shall recover all. Paul and Silas, when they were locked in a Roman jail, chained hand and foot, they talked to God. And God sent a jailhouse rock. <laughs> if you talk to him, he'll talk back. If you talk to him, he'll answer your prayer. He talk to him. Friends, I want to share with you on tonight what your two responses. You talk to him. Joseph had to say, is there not a prophet of the Lord who we can inquire? Here's what I love. There's a prophet. His name is Elisha. Matter of fact, Jerome is so far from God. Don't forget, Jerome is a king of Israel. Israel had 19 kings. All of them were bad kings. Joram's father was the worst of the worst. He didn't have a relationship with God. His, he had a relationship with Baal, the false and fake God. He didn't know who he had with him. He had Elisha, who was the protege of Elijah. Let me share this with you. Elisha his ministry was water. I want y'all to understand his ministry. Most of his miracles had to do with water. Matter of fact, the text tells us he poured water on Elijah's hands. In chapter 2, in 2 Kings chapter 2, uh, there's some marred water, there's some messed up water. Elijah, Elisha, Turn that water into sweet water. Drinkable water. In chapter 6, there is a man who's borrowing an axe head. The axe head falls in the water. Elisha lifts that axe head out the water. In 2 Kings chapter 5, there's a man by the name of Naaman who has leprosy. He tells, Elisha tells Naaman, go dip seven times in water. And your skin shall be renewed. His ministry is water. So, Pop, I got to ask y'all a question. What, what, what does Jerram need? I love you. I want, to, I want everybody else to catch up with her. What does Jerram need? Who does he have with him? Elisha, whose ministry is? He didn't even know who he had with him. Elisha was the MVP, Bubba. The most valuable prophet. He was a real MVP. 
Elisha was more powerful than King of Moab. He was more powerful than Jehoshaphat. He was more powerful than King of Edom. And he was more powerful than Jerem. And he had him on his side. He said, here's what I love. <laughs> Joseph had said, don't we have a prophet we can go through? But what shouts me on tonight is if you want to talk to God, you don't have to go through a prophet. You don't have to go through a pope. You don't have to go through a pastor. You don't have to go through Joel Osteen. You don't have to go through Pastor Day. You don't have to go through T.D. Jakes. You can call them up on your own. I wish I had somebody who had, but as you, you got your own private line. You could talk to them. One on one. Friends, the Bible says that Elisha is not too thrilled with Jerome because he knows what God he serves. He said, if it wasn't for Jehoshaphat being here, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't pay you any attention. I wouldn't even look at you. He said, but I'll tell you what, find me a, a musician. We're going to set the mood. Wow. Play me some Kirk Franklin. Play me some James Cleveland. Play me some Hezekiah Walker. Play me some uh, Mahalia Jackson. Play, play, play me some Ty Tribbett. Set the mood. I'm just pausing every now and then. When you're not at your church, when you don't have a choir, you just ought to set your own mood. Uh, on your way to work, you just ought to set the mood. It's turn off 105.3. Put it on a Christian radio station. Hallelujah, somebody. Set the mood. You find out when you set the mood, your co-workers are more tolerable. Help me, somebody. When you set the mood, you can deal with your uh, spouse a little bit better. When you have a one-on-one, -on -one, Quentin. He said, set the mood. Here it is. What I love, he said, set the mood. And he, this is what he says. And I'm, I'm almost done. He says, set the mood. And this is what the Lord says. Tomorrow. God's going to bring water without rain. You're not going to feel wind. It's not going to be a hurricane. It's not going to be a tsunami. It's not going to be a tornado. But some way, somehow, this valley is going to be filled with water. He said, but there's some instructions. You're going to have to dig, ditch, after ditch, after ditch, after ditch. And whatever you did, God's going to fill. Y'all, just give me three seconds to praise him. Here, here. I want to tell you, your deliverance always comes with instructions. Did you hear what I said? See, some of y'all are saying, I want God to do everything. Everything. I, I, I remember hearing a story one day about this man who was out on the lake. And while he was out on the lake, uh, but Nelson, uh, the, uh, the story goes on to say that he was stranded. And... Uh, he couldn't swim to shore. A man came in a, on a jet ski. He said, hey, get on with me. He said, no, don't worry about me. God going to come get me. A man came in a rowboat. He said, man, come on, get on with me. He said, no, I'm waiting on the Lord. A man came by with a, a big sized boat. He said, hey, man, you need some help? Get on with me. He said, no, I'm all right. The Lord going to get me. He going to come help me. He going he gonna to come get me. He going to come down and get me. The man said, all right. He took off. Y'all know what happened to the man. 
Help me say he died. When he got to heaven, he was mad. He said, Lord, you saw me out there on that lake. He said, Lord, you, you, why didn't you come get me? The Lord said, I sent you somebody with jet skis. I sent a, a canoe and I sent a yacht. I sent you some help. Oh, y'all didn't get that one. Uh, some of y'all, I've been talking to y'all and y'all said, I, I, I'm going to win a lottery. And some of y'all mad that you ain't won a lottery. Well, God said, you at least got to buy the ticket. <laughs> Amen. Friends, I want to share with you, God always gives instructions to your deliverance. When God was going to flood the earth in order to save mankind, he gave no instruction, build me an ark. When God was bringing Joshua in the promised land, he gave him instructions, walk around the city. And friends, in order for you to be saved and delivered on a night, you had to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Your salvation, your, 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 your deliverance always comes with instructions. The Bible says the very next day, that valley was filled. And yeah, somebody said, hey, you right about it. <laughs> filled with water. I'm almost done. Can, 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 can y'all just help me right quick? I, here, here, here's what happened. When the valley was filled with water, somebody woke up the next morning. And they were mad. Because they didn't dig. Verse 9, so the king of Israel, the king of Judah, and the king of Edom set out. And they traveled their indirect route for seven days. They had no water for the army of the animals. Listen, here's what you want to see. So the king of Israel, it's Israel's fight. The king of Judah with all of his men and the king of Edom with all of his men. Understand this. There's some people who were with King Jehoshaphat from Judah who said, this ain't my fight. This ain't my country. I ain't no ditch digger. I'm a warrior. There's somebody else. They, 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 they had excuses. And I want to tell you, if, if you don't shoot for nothing, if you shoot for nothing, you'll hit it every time. I wish I had somebody. Someone had excuses. Excuses I have nothing to dig with. You can make excuses or you can make progress. Somebody had excuses. It ain't my fight. It ain't my battle. Why am I digging? Somebody else said, ain't nobody, anybody who lives by excuses never runs out of them. I want to pause. Have you ever met people who got excuse after excuse? I mean, some of y'all are supervisors on your job, but somebody always got excused every morning. I had to stop and get gas. I, my husband took the keys. People who, who live by excuses never run out of them. You can't do nothing with excuses. You can't accomplish nothing with excuses. You can't build on excuses. The people of Edom, they were only there because King Jehoshaphat told the king of Edom, I'll let you stay king as long as you stay loyal to me. Whenever I need you, you come with me. So his men said, this ain't my fight, ain't my battle, ain't no, no, no make sense for me to dig. But the next morning, they wish they would have dug. Number two, Someone didn't dig enough. Verse 16, then he said, this is what the Lord says, dig ditch after ditch in his water. For the Lord says, you will not see wind or rain, but the water will be filled with water and you will drink, you and your cattle and your animals. Somebody, they dug a little bit. God filled it. And he said, I wish, 
I done dug more. I don't want to tell you on the day somebody here, you digging, but you you tired of digging. I want to tell you, it's all right. God says, whatever you dig, I'm going to feel. Well, here's the last point, and I'm done. But somebody kept digging. Y'all. I want to tell y'all something real quick. Amens are okay. Thank you, Jesus, is okay. I told you somebody didn't dig. Someone didn't dig enough. But somebody said, you mean to tell me that whatever I did, he going to fill up? Somebody dug a swimming pool. Somebody dug a pond. Somebody dug a lake. Because God promised whatever you did, I feel love. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to on the night, but I want to tell you, keep digging. I know your back hurt, but keep digging. I know they talk, look at that fool, but keep digging. Whatever you did, God promised. I feel it up. I want to tell you, here's what shouts me. That was just one miracle. Because when they woke up, they were happy. They had a swimming pool. They had a pond. They were happy. But that God of ours is so cold. He's so good. He's so awesome. He blows our mind. Is there anybody know that our God can do exceedingly? Abundantly? More than what we can ask or think. Y'all fooling me. Is there anybody on this side that know our God can do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ask or think? Is there anybody in this section right here who know God can do and, and, is there anybody in this section right here that know that our God can do and, and. I got one more section. I got one more section. Is there anybody on this side who know that our God can do it? He's able. Let me tell you what our God did. What he did was he filled that whole valley. It had water to quench their thirst. They have water to hydrate themselves and their animals. Wow. But God said, because you had enough faith to dig and keep digging, I'm going to do something better. I'm going to do something that you didn't even ask for. Has anybody here, God gave you something you didn't even ask for? That morning the sun hit that water. And the people of Moab woke up and they looked, and they didn't see water. They saw blood. God turned the water for the Moabites. They saw red. So they assumed that the people of Moab, the people of Edom, and the people of Jehoshaphat, and the people of Judah, and the people of Israel, those armies turned on one another. They thought they killed one another. So they told one another, I want to be the first one to get the gold, get the silver, get the money, get the horses. They took off in the direction of the people of Israel, the armies of Judah and the armies of Edom. And when they got there, they realized it wasn't what they thought they saw. But it was something even better than that. They got there without their swords. <laughs> they got there, they didn't have a spear.
The God that didn't have their shield, they were defenseless. Have you, y'all don't understand. Have you ever heard this? Don't go to a gunfight with a knife. They showed up at a gunfight. They didn't even have a knife. They had nothing. God gave them the victory. Hallelujah. God used that same miracle that he used to quench their thirst. To put their enemies in their hands. So I come here to tell you on the night, whatever you're going through, keep digging. Dig for your family. Dig for your marriage. Dig for your children. Dig for your education. Dig for your church. Dig for the kingdom. Dig until God turn that situation around. Dig until he make your enemies leave you alone. Dig until he put your enemies under your feet. Dig until he fill up the bank account. Dig until for the job you want. Dig for the car you want. Y'all looking at me, you ought to be digging. Dig. Dig. Is there anybody here who want God to do something in your life? I need you to get your spiritual shovel. You better dig. Dig for your blessing. Dig for your deliverance. Dig for your son that's on drugs. Dig to get out those streets. Dig for your blessing. Dig for your anointing. Dig for God's favor on your life. Dig for your grandchildren. Dig for your finances. Keep on digging. Keep on digging. I need y'all to help me help somebody who ain't digging. Touch him on the shoulder. I say, what are you waiting on? You know what you need. You ain't gonna get it in your seat. You gotta bend your back. Hey, you gotta dig. When praises go up, blessings come down. Is there anybody in Sapapa that's gonna help me? I don't hear you. Hey, for for my dollars, for the choir ministry, for the youth department. For the young adults, for my husband, for my wife, for my money, for my future, for my family. Dig, dig, dig until God turns it around. Dig until he put food on your table. Dig until he dry your tears. Keep on digging. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. So many rich. So many rich things were said. So many rich things were said. <laughs> if you got some crumbs from this message, you got a lot. <laughs> Amen. 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 One of the things he said that's when we face our problems, we got two choices. That stuck out to me. We all will face problems in life. Do y'all hear that? Problems is not uncommon to man. <laughs> Everybody. Got problems. He said, you have two decisions when you come to those problems. Are you going to blame God? Or are you going to talk to God? Hallelujah! 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 
Hallelujah. It's up to you. He also told us that God wants us to participate in our deliverance. Did everybody hear that? That God wants us to participate on, in our deliverance. He don't want us to sit down. And he always gives us instructions for our deliverance. Amen? Amen. Who's going to keep digging? Praise God. Who's going to keep digging? Amen? Amen. He has spurred me. I'm about to dig a lake, y'all. Did you hear me? I'm about to dig a lake. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says that if someone will call on the name of the Lord, yeah, yeah. they shall be saved. He wants you to participate. If you just call on the name of the Lord, if you believe in Jesus, that he died, that he buried, that he rose again, you will be saved. If you have never called on the name of the Lord before, call on him now for your deliverance, for your salvation. He wants you to participate. Don't sit down. Now's the time to dig, to begin digging. Maybe you've been sitting idle, but this word spoke to you like it spoke to me. And you said, hey, I don't want to sit idle anymore. And I'm tired of blaming God because it ain't getting me nowhere. And I'm ready to start digging. Hey, start right now. Hey, don't care who's looking and who's around. It, hey, it's your life. Did everybody hear that? It's your life. are always open. Hey, come, please. After hearing that kind of word, please come. Don't sit idle. Come. Come. Don't sit idle. If you're looking for somewhere to be, hey, come join us. I just told you I'm trying to dig a lake and I want you to help me come be it. Hallelujah. To dig for my knowledge. To dig for this community. Hallelujah. That God will use us and fill us up so we can change lives. Hey, he just he, he spoke a word, y'all. That not only look a, why, why will he save us and deliver us, but he said he'll put your enemies in your hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. He'll put your enemies in your hands. Your haters in your hands. Well, you don't have to worry about it. God will deal with it. Hallelujah.